What is going on guys? DJ has here, CollectiveKicks.com. Wanted to bring you guys a video, show you guys myself thrifting around Ross and basically I'm just looking around trying to find some sneakers, see what they have in stock. I have not done this in a while, but I have not um, had time to really get out of the house and uh, get away from the kid and the wife to go do this type of stuff. And it's really tough to take the little guy out and do this when um, when I do have him by myself. So hopefully uh, I can do this more often and go to some of the old spots I used to hit because, uh, man, I miss miss going to this a lot of those places. So anyway, check out the crazy sneakers right here. These things were super heavy. Um, these are some Skecher joints right here. <laughs> they were so heavy. I was like really impressed with how heavy they are. It had non-streaking soles, so it said. And then check this out. They have the Skechers diamond cut non-boost lunar-ish things going on here. I'm not really sure what that is, but I did do that Skechers um, bounce review. I, I can't believe that price one. That was $38. Uh, but that Skechers like review, that it has like 160,000 views on it, which is pretty crazy. It was a fun video, though, comparing the Skechers knockoff version of um, Adidas Boost to the Adidas Boost itself. They had some Lunar Lawn. SB uh, P rods here and they really honestly didn't have too much I was hoping to see more stuff this was kind of at a place where it had more um, this is probably the only really dope thing that they had they had some some Kobe's but I thought this would have had more things in it and they uh, they just didn't have too much heat so and I checked like the kids section and everything else but that is it says focus on those ones for that colorway but I don't even remember that colorway dropping, to be honest. Nike Basketball does this thing where they drop so many pairs so often that you just you just get lost in the names, quote-unquote, that they call them sometimes. Uh, some Hyper Lives. And uh, what else do they have here? Just kind of browsing it through. Lots, they have lots of Keens, the Boots, lots of those ones, and some RBXs right here. Interesting branding how they go Rebox and then RBX sometimes. And if you guys notice the camera is really shaky and jittery, that is compliments to my crappy iPhone 7. Uh, that is just kind of, a, and look at this, this one comes with a free stain for 40 bucks. But that is just a side effect of my iPhone 7 Plus. I'm on my fourth replacement right now, and it still has tons of issues with the software. And uh, I don't know how and why they don't get it fixed. I can't be the only one with these problems, but these ones are pretty rad, though. They had some um, Mickey and Donald joints right here, some skate highs, 32 bucks, definitely a good deal on those ones. So those ones would have been a win too. So those are like, those ones in the Kobe's were probably the best ones I saw there. And look at the quality of the leather on the Levi's, 25 bucks. Honestly, it looks like pretty decent quality leather, but not a very attractive model though. And uh, just kind of browsing through some tempos again. They always have at least one pair of those around. And they, as you can see, man, it was really slim pickings. Then I, I ran into this and I was like, whoa, what do we have here? And it was a pair of Brooks. And then I looked closer, 30 bucks. And this was a collab. And I remember seeing these on Bates' website. So it's a Bates Brook collab. Really nice, like leather lined materials. Really nice suede's on the shoes, and they were only thirty bucks. If I liked the colorway, I probably would have bought them, but I didn't end up buying these ones. But um, but pretty cool that they had these there. Surprised to see that they had a collab at Ross. I mean, I wouldn't have expected that. Here's another version of those Brook joints right here for thirty bucks, but this is not a collab. I wonder how a collaboration sneaker would make its way to Ross, though. That's kind of interesting. I wonder like what chain it went through to end up there because Bate wouldn't have probably dropped them off at Ross. I wonder if Brooks had a supply that dropped them or something. Kind of crazy though to see a collab over there. I just don't, I just would never expected it. But you can see that they just had a bunch of randoms though. This is pretty much what you would expect to see at Ross. Then you end up with a couple random gems. These, these look kind of cool. And then I was like, what are these? I don't know. The, from a distance that... Which had a tan look looked okay, but up close it looked meh. But um, but yeah, dudes, I'm really like not sure like how people are able to find so much crazy stuff at Ross. Sometimes I'm able to find some things, but honestly, it's just so 
not dope, like for the most part, at least in my neck of the woods. But uh, but yeah, I don't. I I know it's hit and miss, and it depends on the week that you go. But and it depends on the store that you go to, because not every store has the same stock. But um, kind of crazy. Anyway, I was looking over through. I always stop by the toy section now, dude. Getting excited for when the kid finally is able to get those Marvel toys and stuff like that. I, you know what? I hope I don't spoil them too much because, you know, I definitely was the kid that had just a handful of, of hand-me-down or, or just a handful of toys. Nothing too fancy, so I, I don't want to overdo it for him. These Chucks in the women's section look kind of cool. They had a couple different pairs of, of uh, All-Stars and Chucks and whatnot. Look at those little ducky, ducky uh, clogs or something. And then these ones look pretty rad, too. They had this kind of pearl, uh, cracked like material on it and uh, then he had a handful of other ones over there but that was pretty much it dudes really weak trip to the uh, Ross for myself didn't see too much so I wanted to go and check out Burlington Coat Factory as well since it was right next door So for those of you that don't know what Burlington Coat Factory is, it's basically another sort of store like Ross or Marshalls or TJ Maxx, those type of stores where they get a bunch of products from other places and they're usually at a pretty good discount. So try to check out the sneaker section and went here once before. Check out all the different colored cleats though. It's like they had a bunch of large sizes for like team cleats left over that they dropped off with these like Iron Man sort of looking colorway. And then I found these boots. I was like, well, these are pretty badass. And then you look, and I was like, well, they're like polos or something like that. And they're like 50 bucks, not a bad price. So it looks like they had a lot of different Pumas here actually as well. And that was one of the cool things that I saw at this place. They had just so many different types. And if you're a Puma fan, uh, these ones actually look pretty cool. I, it's one of those ones I never tried out. But um, but it had a just interesting, I think this was the Ignites or something like that, an interesting weave pattern on the upper and then just kind of looking through, and they had racks on racks on men's shoes. Some of them were okay, and some of them were just definitely super weird. But um, it's interesting to see what type of stock that, that these type of stores get, though. Sometimes it depends on the week and the, and the year and the month that you go, but they have different brands. But they have those bread Sean Johns. Um, <laughs> these were $22. And they have them them um, Feezy Jordan 3 FUBUs. Fat Farm joints right here as well, and those ones were really inexpensive. It was like a Jordan 3, and then also it had the Air Force One sole, but both of them were super bit. Pretty funny. I remember Fat Farm used to be dope back in the day, man. I'm, I'm that old of an individual. Uh, these Puma suede look dope, though. I was like, man, look at this snakeskin look on these things. are like under $30. So I, I don't know if you're a Puma fan. Definitely some cool stuff here. I didn't see those ones in my size, but they had these as well, which were pretty interesting, kind of like metallic blue with a, a clear bluish sole. And they had a bunch of different random colors of those ones around. Check out the, the guests with the, uh, the metallic um, part on the tongue. And then some other just random Nikes that, that I ended up seeing over there. So kind of fun browsing through and just trying to find rare little gems or something that would have more of a high... And look at these ones. Look at the... The, the Puma baskets, the woven baskets. It's it's fun to try to find something that has like a higher um, retail value that they have at like super clearance. And that's part of the, the thrifting fun. You find something that normally is like 180 and then you have it mislabeled for the, the price for like 70 bucks or whatever. And then they're down to like 30. Sometimes you can find that type of stuff at uh, Ross and, and Marshalls and stuff and, and these type of places. Aw, oh, snap. We got them good years. Um, those are ridiculously funny. They're super Timberland knockoffs, and they, they were super lightweight in hand. They were not made like they would uh, they would probably last very long. Kind of looking through, and you can see they had another pair of those crazy Puma joints, and this one was really, really, like, I don't know, really bright red, high top. That's pretty much it, man. Nothing too crazy in this video. I apologize. Not a lot of heat. But thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. And have a good one. Peace, guys.